What's up students, it's your boy Philly Golden Teacher, your Mushroom Cultivation Sensei, back at it again with another tech video. Today we're going to be going over everything you need to know about using Cocoa Core as substrate. I'll give you my recipe for making this substrate, which will get you perfect field capacity every single time. And I'll also be teaching you how to achieve fuel capacity if you happen to overhydrate your Cocoa Core. Today's video is not sponsored by Lowe's, but we're about to do it right. If you know what you're doing already and just want the recipe for my substrate, you can pause the video here. The rest of the video will go over the process for making this. First thing I want to go over is what is mushroom substrate. It's basically bulk material that mushroom mycelium can use for energy and nutrition. It's required in order for mushroom to grow and fruit. All you really need to know is it's basically dirt for your mushroom. So what is core and why do we want to use it? Core is produced from the fibrous husk of the coconut. It's naturally highly resistant to bacteria, pests, and mold, making it the ideal base for a mushroom as they grow. It retains moisture very well. Because mushrooms are like 70 to 90% water, the more water we can hold in the substrate, the more mushrooms we will get. It's also very easy to find. You can find it at the reptile section of pet stores, garden section of Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, or Amazon if you're lazy like me. Core is also biodegradable. You can dump your spent substrate to your compost or use it to fertilize your lawn or garden. You can bury it outside and come back later to find mushrooms growing from that spot. Core truly is number one substrate. It's the best. All right, for ingredients list, we're gonna need vermiculite. This is optional. Uh, gypsum, also optional. You're gonna need a mason jar, quart size, measuring cup if you need it. Your coconut core, I use 650 gram bricks for this. So a five gallon bucket. There's gonna be two recipes I'll be showing you today. One is just plain cocoa core, and one is a mixture that the community likes to call CVG, which is just core vermiculite and gypsum. I personally use the CVG mixture for my substrate, but you don't have to. You can grow mushrooms just fine using grain spawn and plain cocoa core. For the plain core recipe, you wanna start by adding your core brick to your five gallon bucket. I'm using 650 gram bricks of core here. For this, you will want to boil about three and a half quarts of water. If you don't have a quart jar to measure out water, you can just measure out about 14 cups of water. For a pro tip, you can actually use the weight of the dry core and multiply it by five. And you want to use that amount of water and volume to hydrate your core. So for example, if, you have, if I have a 650 gram brick of core, multiply that by five, I get 3,250. So that would equate to about 3.25 liters of water. And in America, that's approximately three and a half quarts of water. Once you have your water, set your heat on to high and set a timer for 10 minutes to get your water up to boil. Once your water's boiling, turn off your heat, get ready to uh, pour the water into your bucket. After you dump your hot water into the bucket, you want to put the lid back on it and seal it. Leave it alone for about five hours for it to cool off. Once it's done cooling, you want to come back and mix up everything. Six and a half hours later. All right, after your bucket is cooled down, you want to come back to it, open it up, mix everything around. Double check for fuel capacity. If you follow my recipe, you achieve the perfect fuel capacity. Pretty much your substrate is ready to use from here. All right, so fuel capacity. What is it? Why is it important? Fuel capacity is basically used to describe the amount of water your substrate will hold before the moisture or water will come out on its own. You can typically test this by squeezing a handful of the substrate and seeing how the water drippings come off of it. You want very few drops to trickle off and stop very quickly. In the example above here, I'm demonstrating you what perfect fuel capacity will look like. 
I go ahead and squeeze the substrate as hard as I can and I would just want just a few droplets of water to come out. Because mushrooms are 70 to 90 percent water, all of that water is going to get drawn up from the substrate. So unlike plants, mushrooms are not quote watered during their growth cycle, so for this reason the substrate needs to be properly hydrated before we use it. In this next example, this core here is overhydrated. It's holding too much water in the substrate. Uh, when you use the substrate, the water is going to end up pulling towards the bottom. Uh, you're going to have water just sitting there. It's going to get stale and it's going to be pretty nasty. You don't want to use this type of uh, substrate here until you get it to fuel capacity. So you want to do is squeeze as much water as you can out. You want only one or two droplets of water to come out at the end. Once you get this, it's at, it's at fuel capacity, so you can go ahead and use this for your mushroom growing. This will also work for loose core, the type that you get that comes in a bag that's not in a brick. If you end up overhydrating it, you're always welcome to just squeeze the water out until you get the fuel capacity, and from there it'll be good to use. Now going over the CVG substrate recipe. Why I like using CVG. The vermiculite here helps hold more moisture. This also helps stretch out the amount of substrate that I end up with. The gypsum in here adds calcium and sulfur to the substrate which aids in mycelium growth. Again, both vermiculite and gypsum are not necessary, but if you have it, it helps ahead and speed up the video here so in this recipe we're going to do the same thing as we do for the core recipe we're going to dump everything inside of our bucket here we're going to use four and a half quarts of water instead since we have a lot more material we're going to need more water once your water is boiling dump it into your bucket we're going to close your lid let it sit out for about six to eight hours come back mix everything and it's ready to use that's the end of today's class i hope you enjoyed the video if you guys like the lesson please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already got any questions feel free to leave them in a the comment i'll see you all in the next class peace out